What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we are going to get into the Glass Nodes Insight Week 35, and I apologize for it being a few days late. Uh, it wasn't put out uh, at the normal time on Monday, and life got busy, so here we go. Uh, before we get into it, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those who have, I appreciate it. And while you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Be sure to also follow me on library so uh, you are prepared for the world of censorship resistance. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. My only request is to please be civil in your discourse. Kindness and compassion are absolutely free. And please consider filtering any thoughts or comments through those. And I think we can all make the world a better place. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Now let's get into it. The week on chain, week 35, 2021. Awesome. Let's go. The Bitcoin market entered price consolidation this week, largely hanging on to the impressive gains since the bottom set in late July. Prices traded between a weekly low of 46,465 and a new local high of 50,461. As the Bitcoin and wider cryptocurrency market rallies higher, a remarkable on-chain divergence continues to form across both Bitcoin and Ethereum. On-chain activity on both chains has remained quite relative to bull market highs. Even as price momentum continues upward, the bullish trends in supply dynamics remain in play. This week, we explore and compare a number of on-chain metrics between Bitcoin and Ethereum to characterize this divergence. <clears throat> Setting the stage, before starting our comparative analysis, we will take a quick look at the big picture position of the Bitcoin market following a very a long, sorry, a, following a very month of strong price performance. With prices pushing above 50K and some notable profit taking covered last week, the market currently sits at the top end of a very high on-chain volume node. The chart below shows the price bands where the current BTC coin supply was last transacted. Since breaching last cycle's uh, 20,000k all-time high, three distinct on-chain volume bands have formed. First, the 31,000 to 40,000 price range, which is the price floor, where over 2.98 million BTC were accumulated both in January of 2021 and in the recent two and a half month long consolidation. This is likely now a very strong underlying support zone. <clears throat> 45,000 to 50K, which is the current range we're in, where 165 million Bitcoin have uh, a cost basis with price at the top end of this range. It is likely that this too could act as strong price support. Then we have the 53.7K to 59K, the trillion dollar asset, where 1.336K million BTC were accumulated between March and May and are still holding unrealized losses. These coins are those that remain unshaken by a 50% plus correction in May, but could also become overhead resistance if, in in if investors seek to exit at their cost basis. On net, this indicates that a fairly strong set of high conviction investors remain in the market and is powerful signal for the bulls. Within this context, profits have continued to be realized throughout August as prices continue to trade higher. This suggests an underlying market strength capable of absorbing the spent coin supply. The ASOPR metric shows that similar behavior was observed after the March 2020 sell-off with the following sequence of events. Capitulation, where losses were realized by panic sellers for an extended period of time. Profitability returns, as signaled by the ASOPR, trading and holding above 1.0. This suggests profits are realized, but market strength is sufficient to absorb all sell pressure. And buyer conviction returns, as the ASOPR resets to 1.0 on a number of occasions and then bounces higher, suggesting holders are profitable, coins prefer to stay dormant, and investors are buying the dip. <clears throat> on-chain activity divergence. While prices rally, an impressive divergence has been maintained in on-chain activity. 
Demand for block space on both Bitcoin and Ethereum remains well below uh, recent price peaks despite prices returning to elevated trading ranges. Active entities on the Bitcoin network is currently around 275,000 per day, um, around 35% below the January peak. Active addresses on Ethereum are similarly, similarly down 33% from the May peak, currently sitting at around 450,000 addresses per day. It is notable that current activity on both chains is similar to the stable pre-bull accumulation range established in late 2020. Similar observations can be made regarding current... Uh, re Similar observations can be made regarding transaction counts, which provide a proxy for block space demand. Bitcoin transaction counts are down to around 200,000 per day, a significant drop of 37.5% below the peak, but climbing from our lowest, most recent within the last year and a half or so. Even more dramatic is the USD denominated on chain uh, transaction volume which is currently down 62.5% to 6 billion per day relative to the April all-time high. Note that the transaction counts above and volume below uses our entity adjusted data, which filters out internal transfers and self spends and thus reflects the magnitude of economically meaningful volume. As a result of this slim demand for block space, Bitcoin network transaction fees have declined considerably, returning to levels that have not been seen in the last year. At present, transaction fees average 21 Bitcoin per day, uh, representing only 1-2% to of the total block reward. For Ethereum, transaction counts are also down 33% from the highs, with counts actually declining over the course of the week to around 1,100,000 per day. Interestingly, within the Ethereum ecosystem, it, ecosystem, we are seeing a fairly dramatic divergence in on-chain attention. Whilst transaction counts are active and addresses are down, the magnitude of fees paid are trading significantly higher. This is most likely attributed, at least in part, to the strong demand in the NFT trading and investing. Total transaction fees on Ethereum network currently sit around 10,000 Ethereum per day, which represents a relatively high level, comparable to DeFi summer and the 2021 bull run. However, the heightened market attention for NFTs has come at a cost, with DeFi tokens appearing to be the losers in the equation. The chart below presents on-chain transaction data for blue chip DeFi tokens, Aave, Comp, Uni, and YFI. The top row uh, presents active addresses interacting with the tokens and the bottom row, the USD value transferred into the tokens. Across the board, it paints somewhat bleak picture with all four seeing structural declines in investor attention, most breaking to new lows this week in particular. Whoa. Bullish supply dynamics. The question of whether a divergence in on-chain activity is bullish or bearish is a complex one. As more trading volume for digital assets shifts to off-chain exchanges and derivative instruments, furthermore, technological advances such as transaction batching, segwit adoption, and usage of Lightning Network and other Layer 2s make it a dynamic problem to solve. On the other hand, supply dynamics, uh, particularly looking at coin maturity, provides a fairly robust signal in either direction, uh, whilst observation of accumulation and hodling is usually a long-range indicator. For example, it takes time to play out. Uh, in current market trend, the current market trend is historically strong for the bulls. The following chart presents a series of supply dynamic indicators for Bitcoin and Ethereum and it will become the immediate, uh, and it will become immediately obvious that similarities exist between both chains, and both look very constructive. Young coins are those coins younger than three months. They are most likely to be spent during volatility. 
A decline in the Young coin hodl wave indicates the market is preferring to hodl and not spend. Young BTC now represent uh, now Young BTC now represent only 15% of the coin supply, and the very strong downtrend is in play. Not a lot of young coins. Ethereum hodl waves are almost the same chart, with young coins trending down toward uh, a long-term low of 12.5% of the circulating supply. More hodl. As these young coins mature and age, the transition into middle-aged, three-month to one-year-old coins, uh, or one plus, you know, over a year, these mature coins are statistically less likely to be spent and climbing proportion of them uh, suggests increasing illiquid supply. A powerful uptrend in coin maturation is in play for Bitcoin and almost 50% of the coin supply aged between three months and three years. Again, Ethereum supply shows a similar trend with a whopping 70% of the ETH coin supply dormant for at least three months. For both assets, this uptrend in older coin supply commenced around March 2021 uh, which therefore reflects a very strong demand to buy and hold throughout this bull market. To highlight this change in market behavior and in agreement with the minimal desire for long-term investors to spend coins, the liveliness metric for both chains has entered a very strong downtrend. As a quick refresher of on liveliness, liveliness maps out whether more coins coin days are accumulated which is hodling or destroyed by spending by the total coin supply downtrends suggest accumulation where more dormancy and coin maturity is building up and less spending is taking place uptrends suggest spending where old coins are moved lifespan is destroyed and distribution takes place steeper trends mean stronger fundamental trends of the um of the above are in play Bitcoin liveliness has re-entered a downtrend which has accelerated during this price rally. Ethereum's liveliness metric paints much the same picture trending strongly down since the May sell-off given a huge volume of ETH is transacting in the, uh, at the moment in the NFT movement. It does indicate that much of this volume are the same ETH tokens changing hands. Finally, a good signal of adoption interest accumulation and hodling is the growth in non-zero balances bitcoin non-zero addresses have continued to grind higher having returned to over 38 million addresses and about to take out the all-time high much like its elder ethereum non-zero address accounts are also in strong ascent reaching a new all-time high of 60.7 million addresses <clears throat> <clears throat> While the divergence between price and on-chain activity is historically abnormal for a full-scale bull market, it is not an uncommon signature for the pre-bull or pre-supply squeeze dynamic. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. These periods often accompany the end of bear market accumulation, where the investors who remain are the strong hands, those with the highest conviction. Supply dynamics seem to suggest an extremely robust underlying demand present, and this should continue to be quite constructive for prices if the trend continues. Aggressive spending of older coins would make a key uh, it would be a key invalidation signal to watch out for. So this is it in this week's uh, Glassnode report, Glassnode insights. The link is in the comments. Thank you so much again for following. I appreciate it. This is all super interesting stuff and is pointing more and more every week as since I've been doing this that we're probably not in a bear market and we were just in a big uh, correction and we will probably continue to see future highs. I'm excited. This is not full, uh, uh, you know, confirmation um we still need to see more but i'm excited all right everybody thank you so much i love you peace